Welcome to In the Middle with Principal Hayward. My guest today, Mrs. Amanda Banks. She's a graduate from Keene State College, has a bachelor's degree in communications, a master's degree in education from Fitchburg State, and she began her teaching career in Norton in 2006. She's held a variety of positions across the district over a couple of different schools. She's currently teaching our grade six academics in action math class, and she is a key member of the Norton Middle School team. I'm pleased to have her on. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, what's your favorite color? Um, green. Green, okay. Is this is why we dress kind of like this today? Sort of. What's going on? Why are we dressed like this? Why am I dressed like this <laughs> and you're dressed like that? Um, basically, today is actually our last fundraiser for um, Spalding Rehab, which is the charity that I'm running for. I'm running yep. Boston Marathon literally a month from today. Um, it's a month from today, exactly. A month so from today, four time. weeks from Monday. Yeah. Are you going to be on the course? Uh, it, only as a spectator, not yeah, as a yeah. runner. But, so why are you you're running the Boston Marathon? Have you ever run marathons before? Or? I actually did one marathon yeah. 10 years ago. And then I've kind of just stuck with running and yeah. I enjoy it. It's fun. It's a good yeah. stress reliever. Um, yeah. But I've done a bunch of half marathons. That's kind of like my wheelhouse. Yeah. But I, for a very long time, wanted to run Boston. And so I tried last year to figure out how I could get involved. Yeah. What was a way that I could get a number so that I could cross that finish line. And then yeah. Spalding um, became a charity that kind of crossed my path. Thanks to my mom, actually. Okay, so Spalding Rehab. Yep, Spalding Rehabilitation. And by get a number, just for people who don't know, that means you're an official runner. Yep. You're not just, don't some people just run it, but they're not official. You're an yes. official runner, and this is your first Boston Marathon. Yeah, yeah. But your second full, complete marathon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so tell me about uh, Spalding Rehab and just yeah. how you got okay. So my mom actually does a lot of work um, yeah. with Spalding. She does a lot of the charity events that they put on. And so she kind of said, hey, I know Spalding always gets a lot of numbers. You should apply. So it was kind of a little bit of a process to apply. Um, but then we got notification at the end of November that I was one of the runners. And so at that point, now you have to fundraise. Yeah. Um, and so Spalding Rehab is an amazing facility um, up in Boston. And what they do is they work with families um, and patients who have dealt with illness or have an injury. Yeah. Um, and so basically they're rehabbing these people and working with the families. So it's not just about the patient. Yeah. But they're creating these connections and these relationships. <clears throat> and really getting these people to live the quality of life that they really hope to live. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited to be a part of a team that is raising money to yeah. give those people that opportunity and those families too. Okay, so um, when I think of running, you know, it's, to me I think of it's like solitary. So you're mentioning a team. What's yep. the team? What's the? What do you mean by a team? So there are seventy-five runners for. Spalding. I would be like, I'll run the first mile, and you guys run the rest. <laughs> uh, not that kind of okay, a team. So everyone does their <laughs> yep, own. Yep. So everybody runs. Everybody starts yeah. in Hopkinton, and everybody crosses that finish line. Hopefully, um, we will. We are. Okay. We're all going to be there. We actually just did our longest training run last Saturday. We did eighteen yeah. miles. We got dropped off in Hopkinton at the start line, and we ran out um, the 18 miles, which was great. And everybody that was there was like 36 of us, maybe. Yeah. Um, finished, which was awesome, yeah. and um, it was a great training run. But we do run um, some of our longer runs as a team. A yeah. lot of it is done kind of like on your own, training on your own. Yeah. Or I just did the Hyannis Half Marathon, and most of my team was there, which was really yeah. cool. So. Do you notice a difference between the, the running that you do by yourself versus with the team? Does the team kind of... Yeah. So it's been really awesome training on my own. Um, I definitely have set goals and surpassed them, which is a really cool thing. Yeah. I think for me, just on my own. But with the team, I've actually met so many amazing people. And unfortunately, not many live local to me. Yeah. So when we do these meetups, it's nice. Um, I get to run with people that I don't normally run with. I've actually met um, a lot of people. One girl in particular is an actual Smalding physical therapist and we've really connected um, and she kind of is like my personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> we ran the whole 18 together last um, weekend and it was, it's awesome. She's given me so yeah. many tips. This is her third Boston. Okay. Um, but it was actually really cool. I was just telling the students the yeah. other day um, at almost the 17 and a half miles we're getting to the Newton fire station and all of a sudden the girl Allie that I was running with 
is like takes off and I'm like we've been running for 17 and a half miles yeah. <laughs> why are you taking off and she starts yelling to this girl who she knew who was pushing a wheelchair yeah. so she comes back to me and she's like so sorry that was Kate and I'm like oh okay that's cool she's like Kate's running um, with her brother yeah. and her brother is one of Allie's patients so I wasn't sure if he was yeah. in the wheelchair or not but she was actually pushing a 150 pound sandbag in a wheelchair so okay. it's like those it's things are so amazing and inspiring yeah. it just makes you a want to raise more money for this yeah. amazing community but also it just like gives you that little extra burst yeah. of energy so what was the uh, what's been more difficult training for the marathon or fundraising for the marathon I think the more stressful part is the fundraising piece, just because yeah. you want to get there. Because it's um, so important. And it's really and it's important. So important for and you the, know what it does. Exactly. What it's going to. Exactly. Yeah. The training part actually has been really good. Like, yeah. knock on wood, like, I feel stuff. really good. Yes, I actually enjoy running, like, out in the cold yeah. weather. I'm out at 5 o'clock in the morning some days, bundled up and just out in the darkness. And it's yeah. been really cool. Like, it's, it's definitely an adventure that I'm glad I'm on. Yeah. And uh, what's your, um, what is the target that you have as a team and individually for the fundraising? So for a personal, um, your minimum is 6000 So anything okay. above and beyond is awesome. And I think actually the last time we met, we had raised over $3 million already so far. With just the team? Our team. 36, you said 36 There's people? There are 75. Oh, 75 people yeah. on that team have yeah. already come up with... Over three million. Over three million dollars. Yeah, okay. Just this year so far. Yeah, and we've been able to involve the Norton Middle School community. Yeah, the whole district of, actually. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it's been great. Awesome. And today's one of those days. Today's one of those days. And you should see we, the grade six kids. They look so cute in yeah, the green. Yeah, and they're competing for a free recess. They or something. are. Yeah. And we call it bucks for banks here mm -hmm. at the middle school. Um, in, in terms of um, you know the uh, weather and stuff and yeah. the running. I remember I would go in and watch a marathon, and I was I would hope it was a 85 and beautiful. What's the <laughs> ideal conditions that you're hoping for to have a successful run? Okay, so if I were to wish for a great day, yeah. it'd be like 40, 45 and overcast, with maybe a little sunshine at the end, because okay, I'm so, crossing the finish. Oh, it's a, it's a ray of sun <laughs> down yeah. there. Who's at the finish line for you? What, um, what, have you imagined that finish line, and what is it that you've imagined that you're gonna see, who you're gonna see, what are you gonna feel? Yeah, so Cause... it's like, it is emotional. Even yeah. like when I did the 18, it was emotional. You get emotional when you're like reaching these really cool milestones. And so I actually ran by where my fa most of my family will be, um, yeah. which is around like the halfway mark. Yeah. And I remember thinking, running by this little field and thinking that's where we were last year. Yeah. And that's where my kids are gonna be this year. Yeah. So it got me a little emotional. It's exciting. Yeah. So I'll see my family, my husband and my kids. Yeah. Um, my in-laws are probably going to be there. My entire family is going to be somewhere along the course. Yeah. Um, getting into Boston is tricky, you know, yeah. on, <laughs> on Patriots Day. Yeah. My mom will be there. Um, they do like a whole reception at the Mandarin Hotel, so okay, I'll have for like all a, the runners and yeah, stuff. Great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I can I can only imagine because yeah. I can, I can never run. I tell people if you see me running. Uh, I need help. Someone's after me, or like I would never just run to yep. run. Even when I was a kid, I was pretty good. I mean, I was fairly athletic, but I would run if it involved chasing a ball yep. or playing defense or something. But just to run, it was just something I never latched onto. Yep. Uh, what do What do you find about just running? Not necessarily training for a marathon or whatever. That you know, you've been kind of a lifelong runner. You've been doing it for a number of years. That you find. That, that draws you to it. So actually, um, I didn't start running until 10 years ago, and okay. my marathon was my second race of my life. Yeah. Um, the first was a, the Foxborough 10 miler, and I actually got into running because I was kind of at like a place in my life where I just needed something for me to focus on. Yeah. Um, and that was right before I started running, right before I actually started working in the town of Norton. So it was a lot of changes in my life. Yeah. And then it's kind of been that awesome, consistent thing that I can do, that I can yeah. just put on some shoes and just head out, no matter what the weather is. I usually yeah. avoid the rain, but I did run Hyannis, and it was pouring that day. Yeah. Um, so I know I could do it, but it's a really cool just 
place to just be out. It's a really great community. The running community is awesome. We actually yeah. have a lot of teachers here that run. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times we'll get together at the like after school and go for runs yeah. together too, which is pretty nice. Nice. Yeah. One of the things from the Boston Marathon everyone always hears about is that hot break hill. Yes. Does the train have you trained to do that, or I mean, is that part of the route they let you run? So we did eight and a half a few weeks back on yeah. just the hills, and we were on fresh legs, so it was like no big deal. I was like, this yeah. is easy. Um, next weekend we do our 21 miles so we actually get dropped off in Lake Natick and then we yeah. run the rest of the way in so I will get to Heartbreak Hill it's the, the hills are not like atrocious it's like incline wise it's just at the point that you get there I will say yeah. Jack Howley has been instrumental in my training he yeah. suggested a race up in New Hampshire Mr. Which, Howley a social studies teacher here yeah yep he yeah. sent me to this race in New Hampshire at the end of January and I will tell you, I was like dying from mile like 11 to 12. It was like yeah. literally a mountain. Um, and so I have to say that race really did. And he, he said, it's going to make you feel real good when you get on to the, yeah. the Boston course. And I have to say, I felt really good because of that specific run that I've done. So Yeah. And yeah, he does have some good connections in the running community. He brought a, a, an excellent veteran that yep. he met through the running community to speak to our yeah. students at the Memorial Day Assembly. So he's a wealth of information. Love those history teachers because they're like storytellers mm -hmm. and they just kind of have, yeah. he has a good way about them. Um, so I've seen pictures of you training and different things that you've put out, letting people know as you're fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen iPods in your ear. <laughs> Anything that you listen to and are you making a special like marathon day playlist to kind of get you through it and stuff like that and what's on it? Because the kids would be interested. Oh gosh. So my family gives me a hard time because I like these like kind of hard sounding songs okay. when I'm out there yeah. running. So like Imagine Dragon and yeah. like songs that so they not, sing. So you're not, no supply. No. Okay, all right, so, <laughs> I don't know, it's a relaxing okay. No, no, right. anything that will pump me up. Um, so like jock jams, old yeah. school jock jams, no joke. I've got a lot Eye of those of the songs. Tiger? Eye of the Tiger, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then there's like some other songs that I kind of sprinkle in there that are just yeah. like sentimental that I remember running other races and thinking that was an awesome song and I remember that song from that race. Yeah. So I am building, um, I do have Moana on there for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might need that. You I, know, do, I do, I do, I do. It's not a super it. fast song, but yeah. I mean, when I hear it, it's going to give me that extra energy that I need. So. Yeah, yeah, and the kids are young, but yeah. I know that obviously they're going to be proud to know that. And well, every race I run, is. Connor said, did you win the race? Was that the Boston Marathon? I said, no, but you'll be there. Yeah, like you just so. go practice and he thinks you're running the race. <laughs> yes. Yep. All right, so in between all the training for uh, the marathon, the fundraising for Spalding and the good work they're going to do. You also, you know, working full time here. Yeah. Um, what are some of the positions that you've held in <clears throat> Norton Public Schools? Because you know, I kind of met you at that point, and you were kind of like a jack of all trades. You were tutoring kids, doing some stuff at the hay. Yeah. Well, so I don't know if we have things? time for all of that. Okay, but, all of that. Um, so I started here. Um, actually, I started at the high school, and okay. then I moved over to eighth grade for five years. Took a year off when I had my first son. And then I came back and worked at the Yale doing Title I, so fourth and fifth grade. So a lot of yeah. these kiddos remember me from Title I or just yeah. seeing me around the building. Um, and then I came back here last year, and then I kind of found my way into the sixth grade yeah. A position, which I love. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it's been. It's fun. It, yeah. It's, um, what, what, how would you describe AIA? Because we're talking, and anyone who's watching any of this, I had math class, I had science, social studies. And really, unless you go to Norton Middle School, you have AIA, you have no idea. So how right. would you describe AIA to someone who... Um, so for me, when I describe it to people, I'm basically explaining that it's a project-based applications math class, where yeah. we basically are an extension of their math class. Yeah. And I will tell kids even, when we talk about it in the beginning, either, this is basically an, an arm <laughs> to your math class. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of just get the kids to dive in a little deeper, but do a lot more hands-on things, a lot of technology. Yeah. Um, the kids have recently written raps on integers, which yeah. they, they loved. And I have to say, the quality of the work when you do something that is really interesting for them yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Um, and they really get stuff, which is really cool. Um, and then actually, Mr. Beard and I had done that escape room, yeah. which was awesome. That was probably a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah, and that went beyond just... Uh, 
interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary thing. That the first that I've ever seen that was a multi graded thing. You kind of did a grade six and seven yep. kind of collaboration, which yep. was really neat to see and uh, see that kind of creativity yeah. take off. It was it cool. Was it was. It was awesome yeah. because I got to work with kids that I obviously knew from last year, and then yeah. Mr. Beard got to meet a lot of the kids he's going to know next year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So beyond that uh, kind of creative stuff, some of the other things that you're doing this year, and I don't recall you doing them in the past, at least since I've been working with you, but you're presenting at conferences. So you've <laughs> yes. got, uh, you're presenting at a conference coming up. So yeah. you're teaching, presenting, training, and then you're presenting at the NELMS annual conference. Yeah. Uh, what are you presenting on? Um, so for NELMS, I am presenting with Mrs. Hart, and we're doing growth mindset yeah. and what that might look like in a middle school math and ELA class. So that, yeah. I'm excited for that one. Next Thursday, actually, I'm doing a math conference, <laughs> um, and I'm actually <coughs> really excited for this. It's a, how you use technology in your math class. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Goose Chase, which is actually something I learned at the Ed Camp back in yeah. December. That we held here. Yep. Yeah. And then the other thing is... Um, escape rooms and how to use a Google yeah. form to make an escape room for your students. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, just some things, because obviously, especially if the kids tune in, they always want to learn something about the teacher and stuff. Do you have any favorite memories from middle school? From middle, actually, you know what? This is for Mrs. Mulligan. <laughs> Um, so one of my most favorite like memories was making a jello cell. I know we don't really do a lot of that stuff here, but yeah. it was actually I think my seventh grade science class and yeah. I had to make a, like a replica of a cell and so I was like gung ho about making this jello like cell. Yeah. It was really difficult because things did not stick nicely into the jello when I was yeah. making it. But it ended up coming out really cool. Yeah. So that was so one that of was my kind of like that project. Yeah. Nice. I liked that. I did liked you save it? stuff. It would be disgusting right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. Nor did I eat it yeah. either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, afterwards. Hey, come eat this. It got yeah. a C plus. <laughs> Been better if I got an A. Um, hopefully you got a good grade. I'm only joking. You probably got an A. Um, what is something that uh, about you that might surprise your students? Um, I don't know. I'm like an open book to these kids, so yeah. I feel like... They you know, know a lot about me. They know I'm extremely invested in everything. Well, what's something they unique do. about you that even maybe viewers or someone or even me or somebody else? Find um, out? So I actually have a sister that lives in town who just had yeah. a baby. So hopefully, in like eleven years, I'll be teaching him. Oh, okay. that would be really cool. Nice. Did yeah. you know I had a nephew that lived in town? I did not. He's know six that. months old. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And you have uh, you mentioned a sibling. You have a, I have lot. a lot of siblings. Yeah. yeah, I have seven siblings. Seven siblings. Yeah, and you are a, a twin. A twin. Okay. Who, she has four kids. She, okay, big family. She's she is very busy. Yeah. All right, so you weren't kidding that we were going to get some views just from your family. Yeah. Alone. Okay. <laughs> um, kind of math question. Kind of where. Um, you uh, talked about the presentation you're going to do about growth mindset. Yep. Um, if we learn from our mistakes, why do you think so many people are afraid of making them? Because you must see that in class, like because math is a challenging topic. Yeah. And I know you guys really push that learning from mistakes, but why do you think people are so hesitant to make a mistake? For me, I feel like people, when I'm watching these kids in any grade, um, I think they are very worried about just having the right answer because yeah. with math you're going to get an answer. The way I like to think about it for the kids too and just remind them that there's so many ways that you can get to one answer. Yeah. I'm not black and white so for me yeah. I know that I might teach you something in a certain way but if you have another way to do it yeah. we want to see that and we want to share that. So yeah. I feel like kids sometimes will go home and they'll say but Mrs. Banks didn't do it this way or I have siblings who are still yeah. in high school and they'll ask me for help and and I'll say, well, this is how I would do it. And they're like, well, that's not how my teacher does it. And so yeah. I feel like people, to get stuck on the one way that you might have learned it. And yeah. so they don't want to deviate because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake. Yeah. But, you know, I like my class a lot because I feel like the activities that we do allow kids yeah. to make the mistakes without feeling like they're making a mistake. Yeah. So it's like sneaky mistakes. <laughs> yeah. I um, think, yeah. Um, what I notice about the, the course in your class uh, along with you call uh, Mr. Beard, who does the A grade seven, is that you really infuse creativity into math in a way that I don't see in a lot of math classes. So when you talk about doing presentations on growth mindset and the power of yet and those type of things, 
I really think it, it becomes more than words when math actually becomes a creative exercise, mm -hmm. um, not just a, you know, like the scientific method, you need to right. do step one, two, three, four. And I think uh, that's really changing how kids feel about math. I think that's gonna pay dividends long-term for kids in Norton. Um, you know, if not that the year that they're taking the course just beyond because their attitudes about math are being changed. Right. So I see that a lot in your classroom. I think you're doing a great job with that. Thank you. Um, one, if we could put up the link to the fundraiser, yep. so anyone who's kind of heard your story, the important work of Spalding, and if we could just touch back about what Spalding's doing and um, some of your goals here, just uh, one more time, yep. if we could put that link up. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, for Spalding, we're just raising funds to help support the families that yeah. need the support um, to help with whatever the patient might be dealing with, whether it's an illness or an injury. But again, it's also about building that support with the family, too, because yeah. um, they do a lot of work with the families. Because you got to take care of the caretakers. Yeah, it's because true. Because they're the ones who are going to kind of give that ongoing stuff. Yeah, which is, yeah. like I said, when we, when we saw that girl running, it was like, it's just, it's so overwhelming and exciting and really cool just yeah. to see, like, how much people put into this work for Spalding. Yeah. Um, but I'm running for people that can't run. And yeah. the way I look at it is I'm running for people that hopefully one day will be able to run. And if yeah. they can't, I'm gonna run for them, you know, yeah. and just bring awareness and try to raise some money for them. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, it's a, I think it's a great thing that you're doing and the team's doing because places like that and facilities like that, oftentimes you don't really hear about them or think about them right. until you need them and that's all you think about yep. and that's all that you need yep. and um, so I think it's great that you're doing that I think it's good that I've learned a little bit about Spalding Rehab and the stuff that they're doing and even more importantly 600 great kids at Norton Middle School now learned about giving back connecting to something bigger that doesn't necessarily have like an instant benefit to them right because kids are so much about instant stuff it's true but really that connection that they're connected to something bigger and I know everybody here at North Middle School is going to be cheering you on so best of luck in the thank marathon you. and best of luck to the whole Spalding team yeah thank you and I you. hope they reach their fundraising goals and I know everyone's going to finish thank you all right great all right. nice to thanks chat. for being yeah, here thank you excellent Amanda Banks Norton Middle School, grade six teacher.